Hi, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert, and recently we've been showing you different ways of getting instruments and other things in and out of Pro Tools, uh, partly because we uh, are seeing the imminent arrival of Pro Tools 11, and there are some of you that are concerned about either using stuff straight away, if you want to go to 11 and want to take advantage of the 64-bit, you want to use that, but you know that some of your plugins may not be ready, or you think they may not be ready, uh, and some, such as GeForce, have said that they won't be ready at all because they're not going to port them for the time being. So we've been trying to find solutions to, to deal with that, so that you can uh, either move to 11, or you can... Uh, you can be assured that you won't get stuck. Now this one is a paid for solution and it's reflected in its usability. And this one is the uh, the VE Pro, the Vienna Pro, Vienna Ensemble Pro. And uh, we were alerted to this uh, by a number of people, some people on YouTube, and also we've known about it for some time because some of our, our guys on the team already have it, but uh, we wanted to show you it afresh and give you a, a show and tell of, of uh, hey, a, how it works. This is for Mac and PC, uh, and it's also for any version of Pro Tools uh, to 8, uh, 9, uh, sorry, 9, 10, uh, and it will work on 11. We have seen it working on 11, even to the point of doing offline bounce with the stuff that it's hosting. So this is fully compatible in 9, 10, or 11, and it's paid for. Uh, it's uh, 165 English plus VAT, so it's 199, about 235 euros, about 350 dollars, I think I've seen on the Sweetwater site. Uh, but I think you'll agree once you've seen it that for, as as a solution, it's the most elegant, uh, the most powerful. And let me tell you why if, in a, in a in a in a moment why it's the most powerful. And that is because you can not only host it on your your machine, but over a, a gigabit uh, LAN connection, you could have a second machine hosting all your synths, and they would appear in in your door. In this case, Pro Tools, be they VSTs or audio units, uh, or incompatible uh, effects plugins, uh, they would appear here within Pro Tools. And the great thing is, as well, your other host. Let's say you're working on Pro Tools 10, you could have a third, you could have a 64-bit uh, host machine connected by an Ethernet cable, and it would work with those. Uh, and there's built-in plug-in latency and all sorts of stuff. So I want to show you it in action and show you it working. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it couldn't get more straightforward, to be honest. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the server, and I'm just going to use my search. So I'm going to use the Ensemble Pro server. Now if I was in Pro Tools 11, I would use a 64-bit version. Uh, or if I was on a host machine, I would use a... Uh, I could use a 64-bit version. So you can use both 64-bit and 32-bit on the same machine, so it's pretty good. So right now, it you get this, this Pro server dialog window popping up. Just leave that for a second. And then I just go... It's as simple as using Pro Tools regular. So what I'm going to do is use an instance of Stylus from Omnisphere. So first I'm going to do is get, going to create a new track in Pro Tools, uh, Stereo, Instrument Track, create that, then I'm going to come into my inserts, I'm going to go to multi-channel plugin, for now because we're on 10, uh, Ensemble Pro RTAS, I'm going to bring that in, Stereo, and then now it says not connected at the moment, so what we do then, if we come back to VE Pro for a second, and give it a second, then we can start to connect it and find any instances of it that are going to come up. There we go. So you go new, connect. Now we're connected. Now there's a couple of things I want to show you straight away. So now that's wired in. There's no audio to set up now. This is going to work just like an instrument. We have our buffers, the latency buffers. At the moment it's 40, uh, 2048. We can make that zero if we want, have no buffers. So the next thing I want to do then is I want to come over to VE Pro, right mouse click, add plugin. And I'm going to do RMX. So it now loads up RMX as an instrument. There we go. Now I've got all the libraries from RMX. So I can see all my libraries straight away. I've got user libraries as well, all sorts of stuff. So go back to the core library. Now the first thing I want to do is I'd like to use it. But I'd also like to use it... Uh, so I could use it in host sync now. So at the moment, of course, there's nothing loaded. So let's load in a classic stylus groove. Let's find one. Try that one. So I like that. Now the great thing is it's now tied in with host sync. So if I press play on Pro Tools, it's 
going to start and stop stylus straight away. So all, all the MIDI is all sorted out. So the next thing I want to do is come back to my mixer. And now because it's a multi-output device, I can hit this plus sign here. I'm going to create two extra channels and I'm going to send those. Then come here to outputs, out three and four, output, output, five and six. I'm going to come to Pro Tools again now. I'm going to go new. And I'm going to create two stereo auxiliary inputs. Let's create those. So this is going to be called Stylus 1. Let's quickly name them. Always the golden rule of doing this kind of thing is make sure your tracks are named. Uh, and then Stylus 2. And then Stylus 3. So we've got our tracks coming in now. Then I come to my input here and it operates just like a plugin. So 3 and 4. Plug in five and six. So let's come back to Stylus now. Let's go to a second instance. Let's make expander library. It's going to get to backbeat. Come to mixer now. Turn that down a bit. Go into output B. That's now coming into this channel here. Let's go to three. Change it actually. Yeah, that's better. I like that. So I'm going to come to three. I'm going to put tambourine in here. So I'm going to go to my uh, groove elements. I'm going to send that out to to, uh, to C. So as you see now, they're all coming through here. All hosted. Now where it gets even more powerful is if you're a stylish user already, there's one cool thing that a lot of us use if we're stylish users. So let's come to timeline now. Let's open stylus again. What we often do is we will then come back to our edit window once we've got what we want. Let's just stop that. Let's also take out host sync. We'll often come back to our edit window. So we just find gentle Jim, bring it in, drag him here. So now he is now on the timeline. So it works completely transparently with Pro Tools. I'm going to lose that for now. Just lose that. I'm going to go back into host sync. So let's do a second instance now. The thing I want to show you as well, system usage, 3% at the moment, running on that. So here's where it gets even more cool. So we're going to go two more new channels. I'm going to create a stereo auxiliary input and a MIDI input this time. And I'm going to bring these down here. Bring that back up there. There we go. I'm going to call that Omni because we're going to run Omnisphere. And we'll go... Omni MIDI. And again, we do some quick setting up. So the Omni MIDI will come in uh, on, let's use 9 and 10. Because our MIDI sends, we're going to go V Pro channel 2 this time. And there. And when we're going to come back in here, and the first thing we want to do as well on this to make sure we don't get any issues with MIDI is stylus. It's all coming on every MIDI uh, channel at the moment. So we want to change that to V Pro 1. Uh, that'll still work. And then we're going to go add plugin Spectrosonics Omnisphere. Remember, this is running, these are running as VSTs or AUs within Pro Tools. So you can imagine that if you go to Pro Tools 11 and there's some issues with porting immediately, you are future proofed. Uh, and, and not only that, this comes with a, with a really cool library as well. So we're now going to come to Omnisphere uh, and I'm going to find a sound that I like. Uh, I'm going to make sure that my MIDI in is all fine. Pro 2 on there. Uh, we'll go for an R because then we can just check that it's it's working fine. Let's try that one. So that's that's not bad. Let's find something a bit more. Yeah, that's cool. We're going to use that one. So we're going to lose that for a second. We're going to come back out to uh, Mixer now. Now, this is now going to come out. We've got it coming out on 9 and 10 here. So out 9 and 10. 
can now turn that down a bit we're on its on its return play all that together so like that we'll get that going put that in record So it's as simple as that. Now I've also seen this running in Pro Tools 11 and the cool thing is I've actually seen it running and it will actually do offline bounce using this stuff which is very cool indeed. Let me show you one more thing I'm going to do now. Uh, I'm just going to mute the, perhaps I can come back to our drums. Uh, now I'm going to create two more channels, I'm going to go track, new, stereo, auxiliary input, two of them. I'm going to create them. So rev send, and then I'm going to have rev return. And I'm going to put an instance on this time of uh, VSL audio in. Give it all the assignments again. So that's now assigned. My audio input I'm going to use, I've got a drop down list here, so I'm going to go in here, I'm going to choose in on 11 and 12. And I'm going to go to my sends here. And I'm going to go to bus, and we'll call it reverb, the reverb bus will do for this. And this is going to be bus reverb. So what I've now got is an instance of VPro working on a bus, so if I... Now I come back to VE Pro and I go add input. We want the input of this, which we know is coming in on 11 and 12. What we want to do now is we then want to send this out, just leave it a second because that's then going to come. We'll send that out to 13 and 14. Input. Now I'm going to get to effects. Let's get to, I don't know, waves. Let's get to waves for what it's worth. And we'll go to waves. Renaissance verb. Now we're hosting a Waves plugin via this to do our reverb coming in and we could then do that as a send. We could also put it across a channel. We could literally just put it as another insert on that channel. And uh, it's, it's as simple as that. So it means that we can host both uh, instruments and we can also host plugins, uh, effects plugins as well. Uh, the cool thing as well, of course, is this also comes with a, com with a collection called Epic Orchestra, which is, which is a great orchestra collection. And uh, it ships with that. Uh, so as a solution for a couple of hundred English, a uh, couple of hundred European and about 300 American, uh, this is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Uh, I'm surprised I haven't seen it sooner, to be honest. I know some of the team have, and when I mentioned it to them, they were going, yes, of course, we know about it. And I was alerted to this by my German editor, uh, Wolfgang. But uh, for uh, a future-proofing solution, let me put it like that, for Pro Tools 10, uh, Pro Tools 11, Pro Tools 9, HD or... Uh, or regular uh, Pro Tools, uh, this is utterly brilliant. Now, this wasn't a review. Uh, this is a show and tell of how to set it up. Uh, and some of you may have more elegant solutions. Let me tell you as well, I can then save all of this instance within the Pro Tools. Uh, this can be saved as an entire patch. So the next time I load Pro Tools, I'm not going to go through all that setting up again. Uh, and it's it's just killer. It's a killer app. Uh, there's no other word for it. Uh, if you're thinking about spending some money on something, uh, whether you're a Pro Tools 10 user, now sh system usage, there you go, Omnisphere, Spectrosonics, and a Waves Reverb, all hosted uh, on an alternative platform. Uh, now, going to 64-bit, it becomes even more impressive, of course, because if you run it as a 64-bit app, then these numbers go flying down, right down. So as I say, uh, 
if you're a Pro Tools user and you want to host a lot of VIs, now I've done some other tests and I've seen that if we host a plugin here in Pro Tools application natively versus uh, within Vienna Pro, then the numbers are even better because you get a much better hosting solution. Uh, so, and then of course you can add a second machine. And so you've got, I've got a Mac Mini, so I could hook a Mac Mini on the back of this and just plug in a LAN cable via a little port and, and I've got myself a huge uh, library that I can just access very quickly. So if you're running out of firepower, if you're worried about going to Pro Tools 11 and not having some plugins uh, that you can run, then get this. You know what, if you're not worried about any of those things, but you, you use instruments and you use uh, plugins and effects, then get this. Uh, as I say, this was not a review, but I'm telling you, uh, I'd sell my bed and buy this because it's just utterly brilliant. And uh, fan fantastic uh, service as well. Uh, we've been dealing with the guys in uh, at, uh, Vi at uh, Vienna and they've been brilliant. Uh, they have been fantastic. So check it out. And uh, I would say, uh, yeah, it's just brilliant. Uh, that's all I can say, as you can hear. And uh, speak to you soon. I'm speechless. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.